uh, on that uh, possible strike. Uh, so we've been talking about a lot of issues this morning, Mayor. One of the things I want to ask you about, your police chief, uh, Carmen Best, took a very rare political stance. Uh, and she had some strong words for the city council. They are struggling to keep and recruit uh, officers at SPD. There's public safety concerns that come with that. Uh, she said, we need the support of city council members. She doesn't believe that they're getting the support they need and that it's hurting morale and it's hurting their numbers. Did you give her permission to go out and say that? See, Carmen Best is her own person. And I wouldn't say that's political. She's trying to say it as she sees it. Mm -hmm. um, and the first thing I want to say is, our police department right now is doing extraordinary work. We've had a number of investigations over the summer on homicides and assaults where the detectives have gone to work and they've gotten great results. Um, that goes unheralded many of the times. We see the big headlines when there is a significant event, mm -hmm. but we don't cover it as much when they do the hard work and get it. So my hat's off to the SPD right now because they really have been doing a great job on keeping the city safer. Uh, we're talking a lot about, and we have been, I sat down at length and talked to Carmen Best about this issue, about what the city council needs to do to support officers. <clears throat> what are you doing? What can you do as the mayor to help support not only the officers, but getting more officers here? Yeah, I think it's a whole range of things. Number one is we had to pay them what they were worth. They went for too many years without a contract. 2014 salary in a 2019 Seattle wasn't gonna cut it. So the first thing was to pay them more and pay them what they're worth. The second was is to respect them and honor them for the work that they're doing. We can hold officers accountable and have constitutional policing at the same time recognize they do a really hard job, mm -hmm. especially in Seattle today. It's a different city. You know, the streets of Seattle have changed so much in the last five years. So recognizing and then giving them the tools and the support that they need to do their job and giving them the recognition when they do it well. Um, the second thing we have to do is to make sure that we're working with them to see, you know, how do we recruit officers? Every city in America, major city, is having the same problem. There's fewer and fewer people going into policing right now. And so how do we make sure that we can attract the officers that we need and then keep them? And so we'll be releasing uh, a study. We've been working with the department and some others to say, how do we recruit better, do better? And we've got some strategies we're going to be rolling out to see how do we get people. Now, we're recruiting. But we're not keeping as many officers as we'd like to do. And we have to do both. They have to know that they're, look, at the end of the day, they're like all of us. They want to know that the job they're doing is making a difference and that people give them support and recognize what they're doing. You're talking about strategies uh, and the study coming out and things you might do to help officers. I know a survey had gone out to officers to have them give their feedback. Is this something that has to go through the city council, though, to be implemented? No, this is not. You know, We will have to have the city council approve budgets for hiring stuff. But we have a range of strategies, again, because there's, we're seeing that there's some people who may not want to be a police officer but are interested in being a CSO. They become a CSO, and we see in other cities that once they do that, then they want to become an officer. So how do we, we're going to be, I think, increasing the CSO program. We're rolling it out now. How do we use that also as a place to create another tool that we have for SPD and a way to recruit people to the police department? So we've got to do more, and we've got to do better. Can we, uh, when can we expect uh, to hear? Something? You'll be hearing that also. You know, as you know, this fall we released the budget, so everything we're going to be doing, our strategies for next year, will be released in the coming weeks. Okay. Uh, I want to talk to you about the upcoming Seattle City Council race. Um, look, you've weighed in on this, uh, you know, not in your official capacity, um, but to supporters. Um, not seven of nine. We could have seven of nine new faces theoretically, after the November election. Um, are there any of those faces you see right there that you hope don't uh, sit on the council <laughs> after this coming election? That's a great group. You know, look, That's we're going to see... diplomatic. Of That's it. right. We're going to see big changes. We know there's a number of people leaving. Rob Johnson already left. Yeah, there's four people leaving, so no right. matter what. So no matter what, it's a change. <laughs> um, and I think that this city, it's going to be a change election. You can call it whatever you want, but I think that, you know, it's a great thing about democracy. It is messy, but there's certainty at the end. And so you're going to see, I think, right now, journalists like you are going to be focused on not just kind of the sizzle, but what's the stake. What are people's real stances on issues that people care about? And every neighborhood I go to Seattle, there's things that are resonating right now. Like what? Homelessness is the number one issue yeah. everywhere I go. And for different people, that means different things. But people are 
horribly conflicted because on the one hand, we want to do better by people. We don't want people living outside. But the other time, there's real impacts on communities that we have to be honest about and address. And so I think people are going to be asking hard questions on homelessness on what people's approach is. Not just the phrases and the sizzle, but what are you going to do? Right. What are you actually going to do? Get down to business. Exactly. And, you know, if you've gone to any city council meetings or watched them on TV, and I've been to a few in the last couple of years, I think we have some video. They have gotten so out of control. I mean, so nasty. Uh, you know, part of that is the people showing up. Uh, the citizenry needs to take responsibility a little bit uh, for the tone of these council meetings. How do we fix this? How do we fix that? I think it's a, I don't want to suggest city council what they should do to do their business, but I tell you, I hear people, people don't come anymore because they're afraid of either how they're going to be treated or what the atmosphere is going to be. We have to make it a more welcoming forum if we want democracy to work. And we also have to get people out of City Hall. It's hard to get to downtown Seattle, let alone to try to find places to park. And most people work during the days or taking their kids of other things. So we got to have more meetings in the community. We have to have evening meetings. We have to do something that makes people know it's your government. This is yours. Take ownership. Let your voice be heard. Don't outsource it to other people. Uh, one quick final question. You did send out an email to supporters of yours in one of the city council races, where you endorsed a more moderate candidate. You called the other one a socialist, and you called the other candidate a rigid conservative. Do you regret doing that? You got some um, flack for diving into that race in the way that you did. I think the way the juxtaposition got played was not helpful. Um, you, it was the press? No, no, no. I, I the way think, that you worded the juxtaposition. Yeah, it, it, was, it was not helpful. And I had some good conversations with people, particularly given the national atmosphere. It happened at the same time that there was the discussion about the four women congresswomen in D.C. And I think that, you know, it's my responsibility to have a more positive dialogue. And so if I were to rewind the clock, I would phrase it differently. I think the concept is real that we have to get away from these very hard line divides of good and bad, left and right. Most people have a lot of common ground in Seattle, and we got to find that common ground if we want to make better steps as a city. I appreciate you admitting that it could have been worded better. It could have. Not a lot of politicians are willing to admit, yeah, I could have done that one a little better. So, uh, Mayor Jenny Durkin, we appreciate your time. We're going to be watching for these changes on homelessness. Sounds like we have things coming down the pipeline next week when it comes to repeat offenders, when it comes to keeping and recruiting new officers. So a lot going on. A lot going on. Busy time. We will put it all under the microscope. Perfect. I you. That's Thank right. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. MJ, we're going to get a check.